nope, I'm not falling for the trap. I'm not going to get mired down in the same old formulaic approach to things. We're not going to lead off here with the government shutdown like everybody else is talking about, like it's never happened before. Like, oh, my God, the Republicans want to screw the poor again. Not going there, folks. Not right now. We'll get to it at some point. And the reason is that Trump's handling this masterfully. The first Republican president to ever push back on this stuff, and it's inspiring others. Paul Ryan. Look, at I'm talking about the government shutdown. I intended not to do it, but I'm just going to make a brief thing here. Ryan just had his, uh, his weekly press conference, and they've, they've settled on a pretty good theory. Do you want to put the military out of business for a while? Do you want to shut down the brave, courageous U.S. military? But the thing is that it, it, even if the government shuts down, it doesn't shut down. And it's not going to shut down. It's going to get done. I don't know how it's going to get done. But this is just a formulaic thing. It happens so regularly now. And the drive-bys are totally immersed in it for one reason. And that is they cannot wait once again to blame the Republicans for it. So given that, I want to start with something else. Greetings, my friends. and great to have you. We're here at 800-282-2882, and uh, email, if you want to send an email, is lrushbow at eibnet.us. I want to start with economic news and some literally incredible things that are happening out there that are not, again, being reported widely in the drive-by media. First up jobless claims. For those of you in Rio Linda, that's the people showing up at the unemployment office and signing up. Jobless claims in America have plunged to the lowest weekly total since 1973. This accompanies record low African-American unemployment. Not just the low for the year and not just for the low this century, record low African-American unemployment since it was first tabulated, which was in 1972. Barack Obama did not do this. George W. Bush didn't do it. Bill Clinton didn't do it. Nobody has done this. It's never been this low before. It's just barely over 6%. African-American unemployment, and same for other minorities as well. Hispanic unemployment is also trending way, way down. But the overall filing for unemployment benefits plummeted to the lowest level in almost 45 years. And you want to hear how this is characterized by Bloomberg? They're trying to make it sound like bad news. U.S. filings for unemployment benefits plummeted to the lowest level in almost 45 years in a sign the job market will tighten further in 2018. Now, I submit to you that your average low-information voter reading this will see job market will tighten further, and they will interpret that to mean it's getting worse. When it's just the exact opposite, the job marketing tightening means there are fewer jobs to get because so many jobs are being filled. And when that happens, it's called a labor market, meaning an employee market, meaning that the employee is more prized than ever and has more leverage than ever. When there's a shortage of people to fill jobs, That gives leverage to people who are in the job market and who have marketable and demonstrable skills. They have the ability to demand more. So this is all good news. And yet, in a sign, the job market will tighten further, meaning the job situation is going to get even worse as this year goes on. It's its irresponsibility. Now, they wouldn't admit this. I'm sure Bloomberg is saying, no, 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 we're, we're reporting this accurately. No, you're not. You're not reporting this in standard, ordinary, everyday terms and words that people use. Anyway, the drop in unemployment claim shows that companies are increasingly ho- – this is the next graph. Listen to this. The drop in claims shows that companies are increasingly holding on to their employees – amid a shortage of skilled labor. 
Businesses are struggling to find workers to fill positions, particularly in manufacturing and construction, as cited in some anecdotes for the Federal Reserve's Beige Book released yesterday. That's all good news, and they reported that pretty much accurately. Struggling to find workers to fill positions, but in what sectors? Manufacturing? 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 I I, I thought we were losing manufacturing jobs. I, 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 I thought that... I thought factories were closing, and I thought those jobs are never coming back. I don't know what Trump thinks he's going to do. Wave a magic wand, but those jobs, I'm sorry to tell you, your jobs ain't coming back. It's just the way it is. That's why we got to go global, 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 global. Well, they're coming back. Manufacturing jobs, construction jobs, that means things are being built. The figures suggest the unemployment rate of 4.1%, already the lowest since 2000, could be poised to decline even further. Now, yesterday we broke the news here of Apple and what they are intending to do directly because of tax reform. And Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, has admitted that it is because of the Tax Reform Act, that they are repatriating $250 billion. Almost, what is it, two-thirds of Apple's business is international. It's either two-thirds or 75%. They sell a tremendous amount of product all over the world. And they sell a ton of product in America, of course, but when you add all the products sold in all the other markets, that's a... It's a tremendous amount of money, and they had $250, $260 billion parked overseas as a result of sales overseas that they were not bringing back to the United States because of the high corporate tax rate of 35%. Tax reform includes a one-time repatriation rate of 15%. So Apple has decided to bring back a quarter of a billion dollars. They're going to repatriate almost all of it at a tax rate of 15% instead of 35. And even at that, Apple will be paying 37 to 38 billion dollars in taxes. Even at a 15% rate on their 250 260 billion. And they're doing this happily. Apple is also going to inject $350 billion into the U.S. economy. They're building a new campus somewhere. They haven't announced what state. The only thing they've said is it will not be in California or Texas. They're going to be hiring 20,000 American employees above and beyond the 150,000 employees they have now. This news has not yet appeared on CNN It has not yet appeared on MSNBC. I don't know if it's shown up on uh, the New York Times or the Washington Post, but ABC, ABC's World News Tonight did a six-minute feature on this last night featuring an interview with Tim Cook in Reno where they were breaking ground on a new data center. Why not mention this? CNN, MSNBC, no mention of the records set on Wall Street yesterday or of the decision by Apple to bring billions of dollars of cash back into the country, which is going to result in $38 billion in taxes paid to the federal government. And make no mistake, millennials like that. The government being funded means more compassion. The government getting more tax revenue means more sensitivity and more compassion and more sustainability and all of that yuck, yuck. So why not mention this? And the reason's very simple. CNN's not talking about it. MSNBC is not talking about it because it's all because of Trump. It's all because of Donald Trump and the Republican tax cuts. And remember, CNN's had guest after guest after guest saying that it cannot be proven that lowering the corporate tax rate will give more money to American workers. They've had guests, panels upon panels of supposed experts claiming that this is not going to happen, and yet it has happened, and it is happening. We're up to almost 200 companies now extending bonuses. Apple's bonus, you know what their bonus is? Every employee gets $2,500 essentially of stock options, which at Apple's stock price, 
Ain't bad. It's it's twenty five hundred dollars reserve stock units, essentially, but they're extending stock options to employees. Twenty five hundred dollars, in addition to other benefits and the other otherwise overall company expansion. And look what's happened in addition to that. Here we are lowering the corporate tax rate in this one-time repatriation rate, 35% to 15%. And what's the result? The government is getting $38 billion it didn't have at a 35% tax rate. Now, CNN and MSNBC and every other liberal economist out there tell us that cutting taxes will never raise money for the government. Cutting taxes doesn't do that. Cutting taxes costs the government money, they say. Cutting taxes is irresponsible. It's trickled down. It doesn't work. Well, right here, millennials, $250 billion Apple had parked overseas helping nobody but Apple. Trump Republican tax reform comes along. One-time repatriation tax rate, not 35%, but 15%. Apple says, hell yes, we'll bring it back. $250 billion brought back that would never have seen the United States light of day, and seven or $38 billion of that goes to the precious, devoted United States government. They would have never seen it had there not been a tax cut. Real life, the real world, has demonstrated once again the folly and the lying that is routine for the Democrat Party and the American drive-by media. And if you don't believe me, Grab audio soundbite number 18. We have a little excerpt here from Tim Cook's interview on ABC's World News Tonight with Rebecca Jarvis. And here's what he said. No, there are clearly, uh, let me be clear, there are large parts of this that are a result of the tax reform. And there's large parts of this that we would have done in any situation. So it sounds like President Trump's tax bill has been a huge windfall for Apple. I do believe the corporate tax side will result in uh, job creation and a faster growing economy. Now, did you note her question? So it sounds like President Trump's tax cut has been a huge windfall for Apple. You want to talk about obstinacy and blindness? Apple is extending every employee, and they have over 100,000 of them, a $2,500 stock bonus, number one. That means that $2,500, if these employees hold on to that stock and Apple stock continues to skyrocket, that $2,500 is going to be worth a lot more than $2,500 if they hold on to it. And this is somehow a windfall for Apple. A windfall for Apple? Apple has pledged to inject $350 billion into the U.S. economy. A windfall for Apple? Only in the sense that that money they're investing is going to grow the company. Yep, what is this windfall for Apple? They just paid $38 billion in taxes they would not have otherwise paid. But this info babe thinks this is a windfall for Apple. It's a windfall for the United States. It's a windfall for American employees of Apple. It's a windfall for the United States government, for crying out loud. Everything we've always told you about tax cuts, raising revenue for the government. And it again raises the question, why do liberals not care about this? They claim to care about deficits. They came to claim to care about responsibility and all of this. Why, when government is getting so rich, why, when a tax cut generates more revenue to Washington, do they not support tax cuts? Because they have calculated it's much easier to beat up corporations and the rich to the benefit of the Democrat Party than to talk about government growth. It's a, it's a toss-up for them. But it, it, it illustrates that all this concern about government not being shortchanged and government getting more money is really of no concern to them. It's just a talking point. So even after the question, so it sounds like President Trump's tax bill has been a huge windfall for Apple. Tim Cook said, I do believe the corporate tax side will result in job creation and a faster growing economy, which, if you're the CEO of Apple, is great news. Because the better off the American people are, the more likely they are to be able to afford your products and other products and other services. In, in a number of instances, Tim Cook lately, it's kind of interesting, Tim Cook lately has been thrown softballs from various members of Drive-By Media with an opportunity to just hammer Donald Trump, and that was another one. And he didn't take it. He didn't swing at the softball. 
he didn't lay in to Donald Trump. And he very easily could have. Reason is, folks, this news is undeniable. This is going to grow companies. It's going to grow employment. It's going to grow the economy. And there's not a single Democrat that voted for this. Not a single Democrat in the country that voted for $350 billion U.S. investment, 20,000 new jobs, thanks to tax reform, $350 billion invested. You talk about a stimulus? This is half of Obama's porkiness bill, and this one's real. $350 billion in U.S. investment, 20,000 new jobs because of tax reform. Not a single Democrat voted for it. Apple has committed to directly investing half as much money as Obama's ill-fated porculus bill. They're going to pay $38 billion in taxes they otherwise wouldn't have paid happily. Every Democrat in Congress voted against what made this possible. Every Democrat in Congress has voted against what has triggered millions of dollars of bonuses for American people. Every Democrat in Congress has voted against the individual pursuit of happiness. Every Democrat in Congress preferred the government's greed over the generosity of private individuals and the companies they own and operate. Under Obama, what grew? Food stamp usage, health care costs, health care insurance costs, energy costs. What became better. Where was the prosperity during the eight years of the Obama administration? It wasn't there for the average American people in the middle class. Under Trump, bonuses, wage increases, stock portfolios, disposable income, consumer business confidence are expanding to record highs unemployment is plunging to record lows including african american unemployment and we're not finished there's much more room to grow this is just the beginning this is just ignition the trump dividend is what this is and it is sustainable food stamps or disposable income what do you want well, you get to choose now. That's the beauty of elections. You want more food stamps? You want higher health care costs? You want to be told you have to buy health insurance that you can't afford? Or do you want more disposable income to choose your own decisions with your own money? How you vote. 